Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, part number eight. Uh, yeah, long time I didn't make a video. Sorry about that. Uh, was all this holiday stuff. So now um, what we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna continue where we left the last time. So last time we were able to create like to kind of read GWT and stuff like that. But in this one, what I would like to do is to be able to register a user. So we're gonna jump right into the code. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in the R schema that GraphQL. Right now, this is what we have. One thing I want to add now is we're gonna add our new um, finally input and the mutation because this is the way you work with this uh, gen uh, GQL gen. It's what you want. It's you want finally create your GQ, GQL stuff like your input and mutation and thing like that. And after that, you code around this. So this is what I like. So first thing, we're gonna create a new input called register. I know by default, I think it's better convention to always do like register input and stuff like that. So this way, you know, this is an input. So we're going to start to do this for the other one, uh, like update in, uh, meetup and stuff like that. You can do this yourself. Uh, maybe I'm going to do this like uh, after the video. So you don't going to wait for me to just override everything. So yeah, so by convention, after you finish to put like the the name of the input you want you always put input at the end so this way uh, someone gonna know then this is not a type or something like that so now inside this one what we want when we reach the start so the first thing we want is we want to have a username okay and a username is going to be required so remember the bank symbol may require after that a user gonna also need an email you're gonna also need a password we also want to confirm his password Plus some other stuff just because I want to show you something, some stuff with Go. We're going to have a first name and a last name. This is what we want to add. Now, if you scroll down here in the mutation, we're going to create register. The input is going to equal to the register input. And now, what are we going to make it equal? Like what we're going to return? So what are we going to do? It's we're gonna create here inside our type. Maybe I'm gonna do this here at the top. I'm gonna create out response. So that's gonna be the response we send when we have uh, a notification response like logging or sign up. So I'm gonna put that here at the bottom inside the register. I'm gonna scroll it back. And what I want to return is an out token is gonna be equal to out token. And a user is gonna be equal to the user we have right below my ear. I'm gonna create this type. So type out token, it's going to be pretty simple. going to have an access token. So that's going to be a GWT and you're going to have an expire at this thing. Uh, you can say string and cast your date to be a string, but also what we can do is we can make use of a time. Now that time right now you see they don't like it. So what happened It GQL gen give you some scalar. So scalar, it's kind of like a way for you to add new kind of, uh, um, I don't really know what is the name of this thing, but like uh, um, uh, primary key or whatever. I don't remember uh, what is the name, but like string int and stuff like that. You can create your kind of own. So here they have time. This is already created with the library. You don't need to do anything. Uh, it's just a time so finally you just this way you can return a go time and no one's gonna like it's gonna be good and yeah so um what we're gonna do now it's we have what we want so remember this is what we need here and we need that in same time with my user i'm gonna just update him I don't want to return a password. So this is the beauty of G, uh, GraphQL. It, if I don't want my user, to, if I don't want the front end to have access to this password, so I just don't return it. And after that here, I want to add at the bottom here, create it at as a time and update it at as a time. So those fields are something we're gonna need to add. And we're gonna need, we're gonna add those right there. And now, because when we're going to generate, they're going to search for those things and they don't going to find it. So it's time to already do this. So you're going to see it's going to be pretty simple. So I'm going to have a password to my user. 
So the password for the user, uh, it don't gonna get returned to GraphQL. So when we're gonna return the user from the, uh, the gra uh, Postgres, GraphQL just gonna reject this field. After that, we're gonna have a first name. It's gonna be a string and the JSON format is gonna be that. Why I always do JSON is maybe you're gonna want to build a uh, recipe and you want to use the same stuff. So it's gonna already be done. After I'm gonna create here, I created app. Created app. It starts going to be time time from the package time built in Golang. I'm going to do the same with updated app. It's going to be a time time JSON update app. And now here, I'm going to add something we didn't talk yet about. And this thing needs to be a pointer. And this is delete app. First thing, delete app. You see, I don't want to return in PG uh, in the JSON. If example, you create an API, but look what I'm going to add. I'm going to add PG. I'm going to add a comma, soft, delete. So if you don't know what means of delete, it's, um, so when you delete something right now, we just kind of remove it from your database. But in some case, you want to keep it example here i would like to keep my user maybe like the user uh, delete his account and maybe want to come back like in a year or something like that so what sub delete mean it's when so by default it's going to be nil so that's kind of why what like we have this pointer and what we do is when the user asks to be delete we put a timestamp on that so we know when he delete his account the beauty of uh, go pg is because i've put this sub delete stuff here tag, what's gonna happen? It's they know by default Then if we have sub delete, that means we don't want to really fetch them. So every time we're gonna fetch, like example, get user by or something like that, they're gonna always make sure that the delete at is null, just because this sub delete is there. You have way to fetch those user who are already delete, but yeah, it's really convenient, it's really nice, so we're gonna use it. So now I'm gonna jump to my resolver file, where I'm gonna generate uh, my new uh, code to to match uh, our uh, schema GraphQL, and I'm gonna jump to our mutation resolver. So now this one is crying because the thing is we forget to impl uh, implement one method to make sure that we follow the mutation resolver. So that create that for me. Now in this part, so in this video, we don't gonna do any kind of validation uh, for the input. We're gonna do this in other video, but we're gonna jump right into it so what i want to do here if you have looked if you have watched my rest api tutorial with golang it's gonna look like pretty familiar so what we do first thing it's i want to check if we have a user with this email with the input the email so you see i do get user by email like that okay I know it's not create, I'm going to create that. So they're going to push me to my user folder. I'm going to copy this thing here. And now, first thing here, I don't like this, okay? So I've worked more and more with Go in the past few days. And what I want here, it's I don't care about this if statement. I just want to return the error and let the one who use this code to add the error. Now, example, I can copy paste this code right there. like that and that's going to be enough but someone in my uh, discord channel uh, told me like give me a really good uh, good uh, uh, pattern i think his name i mean in discord was pentao something like that sorry about that if i mess up your name so what you can do is i'm going to create here another method in the user repo and i'm going to say get user by fill where I'm going to have a fill and a value, both going to be a string. So in Go, when both are a string, you can just put the end like that. Like that. So this is going to be the same thing. I'm going to copy paste this full code. And now here, I'm going to modify this thing. The where here is going to be equal now to a sprint F. So where you can format a string. Where here, I'm going to say percentage V. You don't want the string because you want uh, everything like you want to make sure that you're going to cast as, as the everything any equal and now here what we want the v to be equal we want that to be equal to the fill and here 
is going to be the equivalent of that. It's going to be equal to the value. So now, what that meant, it's now I can take this full code and just return u dot get user by fill. Uh, get get user by fi uh, fill. I want the fill ID and I want ID. And now I can do the same here for email. And now I know we're going to need it. We want by username. Like that. So now that makes the code much more cleaner and easier to follow. And even this field now can be used somewhere else. Like you don't need to create those functions and use that somewhere else and uh, like get that for a field. The question maybe you have it's why I create those three functions. It's because I like when I really know like what's going to happen. I, and I, I don't like to type string and stuff like that. So by doing this one time, I know then if this thing is that change, I don't gonna have any kind of issue because remember at the end of the day, the whole string is a string. So if I do something like that, that's gonna crash my app. Okay. So now here for this check, now what I can do, it's I can check for the user, uh, for the error. Okay. And here I'm gonna say, if I have an error here, I'm gonna return a brand new error. Well, I'm going to say email already in use. I'm going to copy this full code. I'm going to change get user by username, username. And I want to say username already in use. So here we want to make sure that the email and the username are not used by other user. After that here, I'm going to start to create my pointer user. And I'm going to start to fill some data. So the ID is going to be filled by the database. The username is going to be equal to the input username. Email, input the email. Password, we're going to fill that in a moment. First name here. Input, last name here. Created at and updated at is going to be created by default by the SQL database. And delete at, we don't going to put nothing. So by default, it's going to be nil. After that here, I'm going to have an error where I'm going to call a function called hash, not a function, but a method on the user, hash password, where I'm going to put it a password. So this function, hash password, what's going to happen is um, we're going to create here, and I think I should, well, I can keep it like that. I'm going to create a new method where finally we're going to hash the password. It's pretty um, simple here. So it's going to be almost the same code we've done in the rest API. So we're going to create a byte password variable who's going to be our password we have as a byte and not anymore as a string. We're going to have after that the password hash who came from the bcrypt library where we generate from password where you pass finally your byte password and you pass it the, the cost. And I'm going to say default cost. In test, you should surely want the min cost because you see 10. So this is the number of runs. So 10, 4, and 31. We're going to use 10 for now. Here, if I have an error, I'm going to stop it and return the error. Else, I'm gonna, you see, because here I put the pointer, so I modified the uh, current user. Password equal the string version of this password hash, because as you can see, password hash is a, a slice of bytes. And finally, here I'm gonna return nil for no error. Now, after that, I'm gonna jump back to my mutation resolver. So, here, if I have an error, I want to return a certain error to the front end. So in this case here, what I, I, I'm going to do, it's I'm going to do um, return nil error. And because I, I, I mean, something went wrong, I want, don't want to tell them, hey, the hash password didn't work, but I'm going to log this. So in the back end, we're going to see what happened, but uh, here uh, in the front end, they don't going to really have 
idea about what happened. You can maybe say like something get bad when we uh, ask the password, but I think it's I don't want to give them some um, information. So here I say error while hashing password, and I'm gonna pass the error like that. After that, now here later in other video, we're gonna send a verification. Uh, code something like that. You're gonna see how we're gonna do this Well, maybe create a verification code. Yeah, perfect after that here What I want to do it's I want to create a transaction. Okay, so this is something I didn't talk about before but I want to show you finally the tra transaction stuff. So as I don't know like an um, example for me uh, in the Phoenix Elixir when I was doing uh, creation dating and stuff like that by default Ecto so that was the ORM was always doing kind of transaction stuff and thing like that and like I really like it um, like you have some ORM who do this for you and uh, some other you need to tell them to do and transaction I think it's a really good ID so finally what happened with that transaction so I'm I'm not that comfortable teaching that, but transaction finally, it's a way for you to make sure then, example, if something go bad, example, okay, you create a user and you do other stuff with the user. If the other stuff with the user go bad and you say, hey, okay, if this thing go bad, for sure, I don't want my user to be create, you have a way to roll back. So to say, hey, everything I've done inside this transaction, I want to just delete that and nothing else being create or etc so this way you make sure that your database always uh, stay uh, in, in best shape so nothing gonna get bad and the beauty with the one with go i feel it's pretty simple to do and you're gonna see it's pretty um, easy so here now it's because the way we do this it's the only way we can access the db right now is inside the user repo we're gonna modify that don't worry i think it's better now to just go with just one big repo and have everything from here but yeah so now inside so here you receive a transaction and here we can get an error from when you start uh, the transaction so here i'm gonna check if we have an error i'm gonna print f so for us error creating a transaction I'm gonna say dash V error and here I'm gonna return to the front end error that new something went wrong the front end don't care about your transaction didn't work so we're gonna say this error now here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make use of the defair okay and I'm gonna roll back so Defer, as you, I think I've show you this in other video. It's a way for you to just say, hey, when this function uh, finish, so exit, we are gonna finally call this function for sure for you. So this is a way for you to always remember that I want to roll back each time, but I don't want to put that at the bottom and forget about it. And on if error and stuff like that, you're gonna need to roll back. This way, you're gonna make sure then the rollback is gonna be called. And why I do this is because look here. Uh, when we get out of error, okay. So example, if I, so we're gonna create a user. Example, if I have an error, I'm gonna do if error is not null, and I'm gonna return something, okay. But the thing it's the beauty of the rollback. It's because here we return the function the rollback is going to call. So I don't need to call takes rollback here and takes rollback on each error. So this way, I feel it's really, really awesome because I can just call it one time and this is working. Now, for those who know transaction, they know then when we want to save, we call uh, commit. And now you may be asked, oh, yeah, but so that means we're going to commit and after that, we're going to roll back. So yeah, so no issue with that because roll back gonna roll back on an empty transaction because after you commit your transaction become empty after that so if you roll back after the commit no issues gonna happen i mean this is what i've read if this is not good and uh, good enough just told me in the comment but yeah so now what i want to do here so i want to jump back to my user repo and we're gonna add the create user method okay so this create user is gonna be pretty simple so we're gonna use our repo, 
create user where here finally we're gonna pass a transaction so pgtx and a user with model that user and we're gonna return a model a pointer to a model user like that here i want to with my transaction you have access to the same thing as the db i'm gonna pass it the reference of the user i'm gonna say returning everything so this way we're gonna have the id create that and update that from the user who's get returned and we're gonna insert and finally like i say in the other stuff here i'm gonna return the user and i'm gonna return the error that's it so now inside uh, my code here after the rollback right there i can say and that user repo the create user i'm passing the transaction we have created here and i'm passing the user we are currently trying to create and now here i want to check if we have an error and if we have an error we're going to return nil uh, we're going to return nil and the error here i'm going to say error creating a user so uh, we're going to have the error there and the user so the friend gonna see the error uh, later we're gonna modify that for now that's gonna just help us in the graphql stuff after that here i want to commit commit also can return an error so i check if commit have an error i'm gonna copy paste this thing again the log, a log while committing so at this point we commit. So if we have no error with the create user, we commit the transaction we have created. So we just create the user. Maybe it's overkill to just create a transaction for this one, but I think it's gonna be best practice to always use transaction when you mutate something. So update, delete, and create. After that here, now it's time to generate a token. The way we're gonna generate a token is we're gonna create a method inside the user. To create method generate token so now if i'm jumping to my uh, user what we're gonna do it's here i want to return a pointer to out token and a pointer to error if you remember the out token this is the out token we have created inside the the, the uh, graphql schema graphql so now how do we gen a token so first thing we're gonna create our spirit spirit app date. We're gonna make use of the time now, so right now, and we're gonna add a time that hour of 24. So by doing this, we have one day. Time hour multiple 24, yeah, one day. Multiple by example seven, so we're gonna have a week. So you can say a week. After that here, I'm gonna gen a token by using the GWT token library, GWT library. So new with claim. Here I'm gonna use GWT signing method HH256. And I'm gonna set GWT, GWT standard claim. Now I can fill my stuff audience i don't really care expire at i'm gonna make use of expire at the thing is this thing want to receive an intent uh want to receive an in 64 so you can just say unix the id is gonna be the id of the current user you have access to it because this is a method to this user issue at um here you can say time that now and unix if you are here, you can give it the name of your app. So I'm gonna say uh, meet me like that. Meet me up. Not before, I don't care. And subject, I don't care. After that here, I'm gonna have an access token by calling token. So this token here 
it's not just a string it's a uh, so finally it's uh, if you look here that return you at a real token who have uh, those stuff so those signature and stuff like that and this token inside this you can call sign and string in this signing string if you remember when we did i think we did all middleware we didn't make use of this os gwt secret byte so this is going to be the same thing we want here okay the same thing we want after that here if we have an error and this is not nil i'm gonna return nil and the error so my uh the one we're gonna use this function gonna add the error and now here i'm gonna return a pointer to all token where the access token is going to be equal to the access token I have there and the expire at is going to be equal to the expire at we did create and we return nothing. Okay. So now if we jump back to the mutation resolver, now this one know what's going to happen because now you know then a token, it's an out token and you know then an error is the error. So now here we can check for an error again. Here we're gonna return nil and error new something when one and I'm gonna say here for our log error while generating the token. After that here we almost done out response is gonna equal to a pointer of a out response. Here for the token our token I'm going to use a token for the user I'm going to use the user and now I am going to even make it simpler we're going to return that and nil because remember we need to return a pointer to our out response so that's why we make use of this symbol here so now the only thing left so the only thing left here is going to be to jump back to our create user up. Uh, so the migration and change that a bit because we have uh, forget to add some stuff. So one of the things we're going to add is going to be first name. War is going to be a varchar, varchar 255. And I don't want that to be new. I'm also going to have the last name also i want to have a password password is going to be a text the reason is i don't like to have a password with uh, a certain size and um, i've get that in one of the app i've been using in the past few days where they have, they want a password between 6 and 12 so i i really hate that so after that i'm gonna have a created app because this is the field we did add so this thing is going to be timestamp with time zone and now you remember when we create the mutation here i i told you hey we don't need to create it and stuff like that because that's going to be built by the database so that's why you can say default to now so the database is going to default the value to now and i want that to be not null and i'm going to do the same with updated at and now we're going to have the last one delete at who's going to be also a timestamp with time zone but this one the default value is going to be null like that now one thing i forget to show you it's inside my env i've changed my db url so that was postgres url now that's going to be db url it's going to be simpler now what we can do is we can say migrate and we can drop the database or you can do down but i really want to go to drop everything and now I'm going to up my migration. By doing this, if I'm jumping to my database and I'm opening the user, now we have all the fields we need. We have ID, username, email, first name, last name, password, created app, other that, and delete app. As you can see, uh, here they have a dot because I think it's because they, they um, uh, cannot be null. One of the reasons, example, why also I did put the password as a text and so that means it can be nullable. It's because, example, if you use our log with Google OAuth, you don't gonna have a password. Maybe you're gonna ask a password after that, but it's something we can talk about 
linear, but yeah. So now, time to test that. So I'm gonna run my server. And now I'm gonna jump back to my GraphQL playground. Make sure to refresh your screen so you get the latest uh, schema stuff. So I'm gonna call a mutation, we just start user. What we're gonna say, we just start. Inside that, we're gonna have an input. Where we're gonna have email. Where I'm gonna say Bob jones.gmail.com. After that, I'm gonna have username of Bob, first name of Bob, last name of Jones. I'm gonna also need to provide a password where I'm gonna say password and a pass confirm password that's gonna be password. Remember, we don't have any kind of validation, so don't worry, we're gonna talk about that in the next video. And what I want to return is a user ID, email, maybe username. And now I'm going to click Predify and I'm going to click Run. And now I get email already in use. Okay. Uh, user ID, user create that from user, user email. So Bob Jones supposed to already exist. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, and I think I know what is the issue. Here it's not it's not nil. It's when it's nil. Finally, yeah, so that my mistake. Finally, we want to return those errors when we don't have an error. Because if we have an error, that means the user don't exist. So we are expecting here an error. So that was my mistake. So I'm gonna restart my server. And now if I clicking again unsupported model user okay so now we get another issue so error creating a user so with the log it's easier to see where we got so we got here error creating a user where we did pass this user stuff so what i think happened is if we go there uh, to the user here we already have a pointer so i don't need to do reference right there we have already what you need perfect so now if we jump in and we create it, boom, now we get the user we want. So as you can see here in the log, the first select was to check if the user email exists. The second select was to check if the username exists. After that here, the begin is a transaction we start. After that, we insert it to the user, each the all the stuff. So ID one, Bob, Bob Gmail, look at the password because we did hash. Bob John first name last uh, last name. After here we have the created at updated at and the default for the uh, deleted uh, at attribute. Commit it's it's when we did commit. So it's right there, and the rollback like I told you each time you're gonna exit this function, exit this function, you're gonna have the rollback, but the rollback was called on nothing. Now. It's time to test it if we create again with the same value. And now we get our email already in use. That makes sense because we have a user with that. So I'm going to try it with a new email. So John Snow. Username is already in use. Perfect. That makes sense. We have used the same name. So if I call this one John Snow, and now in the same time, I'm going to change his first name and last name. And now if I create it, boom, now we get it. To make sure I'm going to go to my database. Or I can just go here and I'm going to refresh. And now we have uh, user ID 1 bomb, uh, user ID 2 John Snow. And they all have value. And look at the password. We didn't make sure everything is ash. And look here, the delete app is null. The thing I just want to make sure you understand also, it's you remember the stuff delete. Oh, sure, it's not there. Look here. When I select a user, look here. Select a user. So select everything from user where and user.delete at is null. Like I told you, the soft delete stuff tag, the soft delete tag we did add in the user. So this thing here, by default, go around, or go ORM is smart enough to know then when a user is soft delete, we don't want to fetch it. So this is it for this video. So I hope you enjoy. In the next one, we're gonna work with the logging. And after that, we're gonna um, um, move up a bit about the validation because now uh, I can pass 
anything like I can create another user and for the password and the confirm password example this one can be that and now I can create the user and it still work but we want to make sure that the confirm password match the password so I hope you enjoy uh, the repo is going to be in the description and you have access to each uh, part uh, in the each branch and we're going to talk in the next video bye everyone